This podcast was previously called Business From Within. But one of the biggest things I know in my life and the lives of people that I've coached and even my mentors, if you're not aligned 100% with what you're going to do, things just don't go as smoothly. Things are a little bit tougher. I got to tell you, over the, I think we've done 40 episodes as the Business From Within podcast, and I realized 90% of the results we see with working with people come from within. So many people become victims by saying, I need something outside of myself to fix myself. When the answer is in who you are, in yourself, you have the answer. And you know what? Dealing with relationship coaching, dealing with business coaching, at the end of the day, my heart aligns with from within more than it aligns with business from within. And I'd encourage you to ask yourself, where am I not aligned? And I'm gonna tell you right now, when you're aligned, you can go 10 times farther, 10 times faster, and it doesn't feel like work. Business From Within podcast has been a lot of fun, but now it's called From Within. And it now touches the lives of people all over the place. Rather than just focusing on business, it's truly a catalyst for your life, your business, and relationships. Thanks for listening. Hey guys, this is Ben here from the Business From Within podcast. We have uh, Brian Scone on the show. He is the author of What Matters Most. Uh, uh, we were going to get into that. Also, he's a uh, you know, previous drug dealer, previous, previous uh, some, some stories there. Uh, but he's also, he's mostly a father and he's mostly a husband. And he's a man of God. And I'd like to ask him some questions about that. He's a very world-renowned, almost, in his world, in the world of real estate investing. He is very successful. He's a serious entrepreneur in that he's figured out that game. I think it pays his way quite well while he's doing things that he loves to do. He's also the co-founder of uh, the board, board meetings, and that's where families get together, and they hit the surfboards, and they start connecting, and that's a pretty amazing thing, too. So very interesting guy. I'm excited to have him on the show. Thanks for showing up, Brian. Yeah, thanks for having me, buddy. And you, you butchered my name. Is that okay? What did I say? Scone? Scrone? What is it? Yeah, I'm not an Italian dessert, buddy. My last name's Scrone. Dude, I'm going <laughs> Scone all day. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you a shirt that says Brian Scone. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, listen, Sorry. I've, been, I've, been, I've been called worse, my friend. Okay, good. I, you know, I said it, and I'm like, I just butchered his name. But I just <laughs> it, you know what I'm thinking? Scrone. That's right. That's all right, man. Cool, man. Well, hey, tell me what's going on. Like, you've got, uh, you got, how's the book going? What matters most? How's that, how's that going? Is it going as well as you want it to go? Good. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I'll be honest with you, which we talked about being uh, transparent here. Um, I am doing a lot of real estate right now, and it's taking up uh, the majority of my energy and resources. I have some great people on my team, but you know, we're in a, in a cycle in the market where it is an opportune time to be doing some volume. Mm. Um, and I have a, a pretty big uh, investor database and network that I'm serving. And, you know, we have our own portfolio that we're constantly, you know, buying and selling and trading. And we're, we're uh, building a bunch of uh, real estate throughout the state of Florida. So pretty busy there. The, the book is, is going great. I mean, at the launch, there was a big, you know, big push and yeah. a lot of good feedback. It, it went, uh, you know, international in Canada, Amazon was number one best selling in, in Canada and the US there at launch time. And then, cool. you know, it's dropped off a little bit, but definitely uh, I, I give some talks around the, uh, you know, the messaging behind the book. And it's, it's definitely a passion project for me. I love, uh, I'm finally at the point in my life where I'm more excited about helping people than I'm worried about being judged for all the shit I did as a kid. <laughs> you know what? I like the way this is starting. I really do. Cause everyone's, you know, like you could be coming on the show and going, going after like what you're, you, you know, the five F's and all this, which we'll get into, but it's like totally real. Like shit, man, I've got so much on my plate. I'm working right now. Like I, it's just so real. I really appreciate that. I truly do. Yeah. I think a lot of people that are authors and speakers and it's, it's something I, I hunt for in relationships, guys. I want to keep it real. I think that's a uh, cool, very cool. Life's too short to bullshit, man. Yeah, no doubt. I don't waste too much time with that kind of stuff. So, 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 so here's my question then. Um, I'd like to hear your backstory, a little bit of your backstory. I'd like to hear a little bit about, uh, you know, you, you've developed a five, a five system. I actually think that you're more than that, to be honest. I think I look at this book, I look at the five pillars and these, 
is it's beautifully packaged. And I think there's more to Brian. I guarantee you there's more to Brian. This is a nice package. It's got, and it's marketable. You got the five pillars, five Fs. It's all packaged nicely, but I'm like, there's more to Brian than this. I think there's a, there's a different book in you. I think not saying anything negative about the book you wrote, but I just think there's more. That's my gut beyond gut. And I'm thinking, it feels like you're stuck in this, stuck in a, stuck in a book. And I'm like, no, no, Brian's more than this, but I do want to hear about the book, obviously. Well, I appreciate that. And there is a, there is a 2.0 or a, a, another book in me for sure. But, uh, yeah, where do I start? I mean, I, I grew up in a, a loving, nurturing environment in New Jersey, uh, big family, friends, you know, uh, Italian, Irish background. So always had a house full of people, uh, always had a, a lot of uh, stability and love from my, uh, my family. Um, but that all didn't matter because when I became a teenager and I, I, I like to joke and blame it on the hormones of being a 13 year old in New York and New Jersey, but I, I just went completely off the rails when I hit 13 mm -hmm. and got into the drugs and the drinking and the, you know, sleeping around and getting arrested and dealing drugs and you know, all that culminated with a couple of abortions when I was 21 uh, living in Arizona. And that was sort of my, you know, I think everyone has a, this life changing experience that happens. And that for me, it was a real shitty one. Um, it was really dark, really dark time. And I, I've listened to some of your background and we have a lot in common. Um, but it was looking back on it. It was one of the biggest gifts. You know what I, you know what I think the next name of my book is, and it's going to sound crazy. Good. It's <laughs> on my show. This is going to be the one that goes viral, right? <laughs> Let's hear it. Uh, the gift of abortion. And I know that's, I love it. Love it. Sounds like a slap in the face to probably some people that are struggling with abortion right now. Wow. But I think that once you can work through it, um, for me, it's been it, it's been a game changer for Dude, me. When that's I, what I was feeling right there. I can tell you right now. I knew there was something more. That's the one that doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Like there's the tactical side where it's like that one there is like okay, I want to read that one. You know what I mean? Like that's 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 pretty. Uh, I'm just sitting with it. Like that's pretty awesome, man. I think yeah, it, I, I think you caused a lot of trouble with that you know the gift of abortion like like it's pretty intense it's kind of up my alley to be honest a little bit more rough around the edges and a little shocking but i think that i think how many people need a voice for that like this gotta yeah. be gotta be man yeah and i'm not bashful about sharing my my story like i sure. said earlier i'm more excited about helping people than i am about being judged but i've i've given i've been, I've been blessed to have some platforms um from the launch of the book and for sure even leading up to it, we have a close mutual friend in, in Philip McKernan, and he put me on his one last talk stage. And that was that was sort of where, you know, the, the trajectory of the messaging that I want to, mm. you know, share with the world and how I want to serve the world changed. And uh, it all started with that really dark time when I hit 21. Mm. Like I said, I went through a really funky period, a lot of depression, a lot of thoughts of suicide, and just, you know, I'm telling myself I'm the devil and I don't deserve this yeah. life. Was that from the abortion at one point? Like, is that because of the guilt and the shame and all that stuff? Yeah, I mean, you and I talked about spirituality and faith before. I grew up in a, in a Catholic upbringing, which was pretty dogmatic. So, you know, the words abortion and, and my yeah. Catholicism don't go well. It's sin, uh, man. So, it's hardcore. Yeah. yeah, cardinal sin. So I, I was beating myself up over it. To answer your question, yes, the... The rock bottom for me was that the, those couple of years um, around those abortions and just truly and honestly not being able to forgive myself. I was like, this is, you know, I'm the devil. I'm, you know, I'm a monster. And looking back on it um, and moving through this process, and again, I don't have it all figured out. I talk about this in the book, but, you know, sharing that story and looking back and starting this process of, you know, of healing and, and forgiving myself, it's opened up. And the depth of the relationships now that I have with my wife, who I was telling myself I already had this beautiful, loving, spiritual relationship with her. And I did. Uh, that's what, you know, I, I believed yeah. it. But, you know, when you open up and talk about your darkest secrets, that's when shit goes to a whole new level. And I had that conversation with my wife and my father, who's a close friend, and my, my mother, who's like an angel in my world, one of my best friends. And um, it, it just was a game changer for me. So it's really become a true gift. And as I share the story on different stages and interviews, I, mean, I, I can't tell you how many, um, you know, elders have come up to me. And, you know, one in particular, you know, this woman was probably late 70s, if I had to guess. I gave a talk. Brian, I'm just going to plug in here. 
I, I don't want you to be distracted with me trying to plug in my computer. I want to hear what you're saying. Just give me one second. This is real deal right now. <laughs> Just one second. You're about to die there. Give me the, gave me the notification. I think things are things are too polished anyways. This is a little bit of a, a commercial for, for plugging in your computer. This is where your sponsor, this is where your sponsor gets plugged in. Well, that's uh, it's the uh, powercords.com. Uh, <laughs> so, so anyways, so yeah, go back, go back one about uh, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, what you're saying there. And it's, it's, yeah, not, not, not a problem. So I think the takeaway or the, the idea is, is that, you know, in giving and sharing the experience that I had with this and, you know, is it a crisis or is it an opportunity for me? I made it, I, I, it's become an opportunity. It was a crisis for me 20 yeah. years ago, but now I, I share the story and I have complete strangers, people I don't even know their names coming up to me or reaching out to me and just, just saying a simple thank you for, through me sharing that experience and how it's played out for me, giving, has given them the opportunity or the, um, yeah, the opportunity to forgive themselves or at least permission maybe. Yeah. Permission is probably a good word. I mean, I, one, one woman in particular, and it really, really struck me, an elder woman, I had a guest in her late seventies came up to me with tears in her eyes and said, you know, thank you for sharing. And she said, I, I had an, I had an abortion uh, when I was a teenager. And so you do the math, this woman's in her late seventies. So 50 something plus years, this woman buried this shit. Wow. And just never forgave herself. Never it just sort of buried it. And you know, you could see the, the release that was happening for her. And I, you know, I, I can imagine the healing that's happened since. So, you know, this isn't, you know, this is for teenagers and, and middle-aged people and elders and everybody in between. Crazy. We're all, every, everyone's got a story, right? I mean, everyone has a hero's journey. Um, and I think everyone has a book in them and a story and deserves to be, you know, their, their story needs to be shared with the world. Yeah. It's just that we, we, we beat ourselves up. You know, we're, we're trying, we're, we're humans trying to figure out how to have this human experience. And sometimes it's shitty and, and we get stuck in that space and we, uh, we tell ourselves otherwise. So for me, it, it's really become more and more of a gift. Yeah, that's, it's, it, you, it, what a surprising story. And on, on like a, you'd think maybe a 20 year old shows up, you know what I mean? That kind of ties to your background, but a 70 some year old lady coming up to you and saying, thank you. Like, man, it makes me think about people holding their stuff and my own stuff. I, that's why I look so hard. Like, I just feel like what, what's, what's in me and how's that affecting my life as in relationships and business and everything. Like, it's like, what's still there? Something I don't want to look at. You know, I feel like the freedom you must have felt by healing through this and just bringing it to the surface. Is that something you can talk about? Yeah. And I'll be honest with you. It's a process, not an event. Like I talk about in the book, or, you know, rewind 20, 20 something years ago, I went through that experience. I was 21 years old and I, I feel depressed and, and, and really dark and, I did finally, after a couple of years of wallowing around in my own shit, reach out and ask for help. So I hired a shrink. Wow. Wow. I hired a shrink, and that went well. She gave me some food, <laughs> but then she started her own family, closed down her practice, and I wallowed some more. And then wow. um, I reached out to this total random stranger. I was coming down off of a mountain in a hike that I was doing in Santa Barbara, where I was living, and there was a young priest getting in his car um, in the parking lot next to me. So I put the dog in the car, rolled down the windows, and went up and just said, Hey, do you mind if I grab your ear? Cause I'm struggling right now. So he takes me wow. in his, takes me into his, uh, to the home there, the retreat in the, where he was living right across the street. And I just spilled my beans to him and really focused around this forgiveness or inability to forgive myself and the wow. guilt and fear around these abortions. And he put his, you know, he stopped me in the middle of mid sentence and he said, you know, you're, you're one of the luckiest human beings in the world. He said, uh, and I was sort of taken back. I'm like, I'm, telling you I'm having the worst time of my life and you're telling me I'm the luckiest guy in the world. And he said, you know, you know, you have the opportunity now in the protection and the love and the wisdom of these two unborn children as your guardian angels for the rest of your life. And it was like, you know, the weight of the world lifted off of my shoulders in that guy's room Wow. Um, and total stranger, um, you know, and those were some of the most loving, mm -hmm. not judgmental wisdom filled words of advice that I've ever gotten. I don't know the guy's name, never saw him again. I sat in his room for a half hour and he wow. changed, changed my whole perception around, wow. is, it, is it a crisis or is it an opportunity, right? And so to me, it's a, it's a gift. 
it's a beautiful story. I was going to ask you who the two angels were. You know, I know you were dedicating your book to the two angels. And yeah, my, uh, those unborn yeah. children, you know, I, I still think about it. I still think about it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I have two beautiful boys now that I have an incredible relationship with. I'm still trying to figure out the parenting thing. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's it's a day to day thing, as you know. For sure. Uh, and sometimes I'll get, sometimes I'll catch myself. I think it, the quantum leap is to catch myself, and you know, sometimes you can slip back into that guilt or that fear based thought about, well, what if? And you know, I'm mm -hmm. looking at the, and looking at the eyes of my two boys and thinking, you know, you know, are these reincarnations of those children? I mean, I have a lot of thoughts around that. I'm not going to lie to you, but I always. <laughs> I always catch myself and remind myself that, um, look, Brian, you're a spirit trying to figure out this human experience and you're doing the best you can. And, uh, yeah. you know, I can say it humbly, but I think I, I'm doing a pretty good job. I mean, I make a lot of mistakes with my kids, but they, one thing my children know is, is that they are 110% loved. Yeah. Interesting. So, uh, love hearing your perspective. Um, so I always wonder why people come on a show. I was like, like, why, why come on a podcast? Like, I get it. They get to promote your book. Like I'm, you know, like, and maybe there's a brand you're building, but like, like, no, I'm, not, I'm not here to sell anything. No, no, I get it. I get it. But I'm just, I'm speaking to the assumptions and, and I just want to say like, first of all, I love having you on my show. There's no question, but I was wonder, like, like I want to go on a show. I'd go on any show. You know, like if it's a good one, I'm in. If I, well, I guess if it's a loser, I'm not going to go on it. But if it's someone that's cool or and I want to connect to, because I want to share my story, I want to impact people. And, and what is your motivation to being on the show? Like what, what would be the end result where you're like, man, good, it, it was exactly what I wanted. If, if, and and I, don't, I don't look back. And first of all, I, you know, trying to connect the dots is a very interesting thing, right? But what I know from experience is, well, number one, let's just talk about uh, the reality of the situation. Why would I want to be on your show? Number one, I, I like and respect you. So again, I, I'm not going to spend time or invest time with people that I don't 100%. know, like, and trust. So there's, there's answer number one. Answer number two is, is through my last 20 years of being an entrepreneur and running businesses, I realized that um, the internet is a very, very powerful thing. Um, and it's a great platform and a tool to be able to share uh, whatever, whatever your message is. For me, I, I want to serve and I want to help people that are... Um, dealing with whatever they're dealing with. I mean, I, I think that call it abortion or call it drugs or call it whatever. Everyone's got a story, man. Everyone's got this hero's journey that they're dealing with. So um, the short answer is, is that if I can, we can record this interview and, and, and it helps one person, which I can say humbly, I know it will. Yeah. Um, and th that person might not hear this interview for six years or, or they might hear it's it next So true. Day. It's so cool, isn't it? Yeah, and I don't, I don't get wound up about trying to connect those dots and worrying about that. Um, cool. 15, 20 years ago, I was probably, it was, you know, I think that when you're wound up with that, it's really just ego, right? Like, oh, who's, who's paying attention? Who am I helping? I, you know what? I, I just put it out there and trust that. A little, that. More, little more trusting, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's where the faith comes in. No, I, and I, I only ask you that because it's, we, we're, we're friends. We know each other. and just sit there and hammer a guy right at the gate. Why are you on the show? I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> I just know that I just think that um, I always wonder, like I, if I want on the show, what do I want? I want to impact someone. You know what I mean? Like I want to like, do you know what I thought about the other day, Brian is I was, I was, I was sitting there. Someone, someone was sitting down and talking to me. He goes, you've gone through a lot of shit. He's like, he's like, and, and he's talking about this, like you've come so far, you know, so much or whatever. They're just kind of just sitting there saying nice things. And he's like, He's like, like, what, what motivates you? Like, what keeps you going? And I thought, and like, why do you do what you do? And it, it was just an interesting question. And I think you can relate to this. As I figured, I figured I just want to help people, but that seems so like blah. Like I want to help people. Like, it's like, like why do I want to go help someone? Like, why is that so intensely driven? Well, I've overcome a lot, I'd say. Right. And I think you relate, right, Brian? You've overcome a lot. And, but yeah. then I went, oh, what if I had the cure for cancer? And I just had to go and touch someone on the shoulder that had cancer and they'd be healed. What would I do the rest of my life? I went, holy shit, I know how to get over fear. I know, you know how to get over the abortion or, or at least have, you have some authority in that. And it's almost like you look back and everything that you've overcome, you now have the ability to heal. And it's like, that's why I'm going, man, my entire life has to be dedicated Cause I know how, like I meet a guy that's insecure. I know how to get, I know, I know the pathway out. 
you know, I know that, you know, you meet someone that's gone through abortion, you, you could help them through that. And you can see that is, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And I think for me, I'm, I'm a student for life. And I think that in, in, in teaching and sharing, there's so much to be learned. I mean, I'm, I'm constantly taking in and listening and, um, hmm. I'm a big observer. So I think that one of the, one of the most beautiful leveraged ways to learn is, is, is to teach. Um, and so that's why I love giving interviews and, and speaking on stages, yeah, I love it. Sharing, sharing my book. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it does sound a little cliche to say, you know, I'm, I'm here to serve, but I'm a but simple it's, guy. It's legit, man. I, it's legit. People that listen to this show, trust me, know what that means. <laughs> at, at, the end of, at the end of the day, I'm a simple guy and I, um, I enjoy my family. I live, in, I live in paradise. I just surfed for three hours this morning in a, a big hurricane swell. I'm sure. Uh, I don't know if you know. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hey, that's got to be close to you. Yeah, the East Coast is getting lit up right now. We have so, some real So tell me about surfing. Like, is this, <laughs> there's, look at this guy, smile ear to ear. <laughs> Just say the word, hey? So, yeah. so, like, what is it about people that get this bug? Like, there's guys that, like, you're one of them, right? Like, you love surfing? No, I'm addicted to it. I'm, I'm full on addicted. I mean, it's wow. um, something that I didn't find until I was an adult. Um, when I was living in Santa Barbara and going through that shit that I was just talking about, that story yeah, with yeah. in Santa Barbara, I was 25 years old when I moved there. And that's when I, uh, a, a childhood friend that was living there, uh, Vinny from New Jersey, if you can believe that, uh, <laughs> and, and you need to, you need to get out in the water. And, um, I've, I've never looked back. I mean, it's been, I've had some incredible, incredible life changing, uh, moments out in the ocean and, it's for me, it's my exercise. I talk about fitness in the book and that's a really critical component of my lifestyle. And I don't go to the gym, as you can tell, I'm not a big, big muscle head. I'm just a, a lean, uh, very fit guy, but then it's all as a result of the ocean. I mean, I, um, I'm in the water seven days a week, usually uh, six days a week. And, um, wow. I, I crave it and, uh, it's just part of my lifestyle. You would die here. <laughs> We're in yeah. a big desert. <laughs> I, I get I get cranky pretty quick in landlocked places. <laughs> wow. that, that's that's really cool. Tell me about your family. Is this is like so? Let's just say this: family, faith, fitness, finances, and friends. These are your. These are what you have categorized as the foundation, the, the 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 whole picture. These are the things to worry about, and these are the things to kind of discipline yourself around, right? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I always uh, like I said, I'm a simpleton, but. Uh, the five F's I always like to give credit where it's due is just from a mentor, uh, Keith Cunningham, who I worked with 20 plus years ago and he's still a, he'll always be a mentor. He's an older guy. Um, he introduced me to the concept like 20 plus years ago. I wrote it down and went in one ear and out the other. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. You know, I went through the, some ups and downs in life like we all do. And the 2008 crisis actually in the real estate world is really what sort of mm. brought me back to those notes and, and said, you know what, I got, I got to, I got to look at, my life and try and um, put some structure around it because I feel like I'm just all over the place. And um, I started looking at every day and how I'm, how I'm investing my time around those five relationships. Those five relationships are, are borderless and timeless. You know, it's a matter of semantics. Maybe people are calling them something different, but whether it's me, you, or some guy in Africa or, you know, a homeless guy or a rich guy or, or gal, I think everyone's touching those five things. So, I just look at each day and, and um, I'm pretty clear on how I prioritize those things. And so I invest my time, you know, according to mm. my priorities. And what are they? The way that I present them in the book. So faith to me is hands down. And, and when I say faith, put dogma and religion aside. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about relationship with self and my relationship with my higher, higher power. If, if that shit is straight, and then those other four F's are going to, you know, my, my fitness and my family and friends and my finance are going to flow. Sure. Um, I got to get out of bed and make shit happen in those other areas, but uh, it, it becomes, you know, this not effortless, but it becomes a lot easier. In your book, you say that you love God. What does that mean? Yeah. So I have this, uh, for me, God is this um, relationship with, it, it ties back to myself, to be honest with you. As a child, there was this, this uh, it was a relationship outside of myself. Yeah. Um, and for me now, I believe that uh, I'm a part of God. And I, I look at my children and I see that they're little godlings. And I look at my wife's eyes and she's a goddess. And so, mm -hmm. so for me, it's like this, uh, it's this omnipresent relationship versus it being outside of myself. 
Yeah. Uh, I do, I do look and like the ocean's a big part of, of what I would call God. I mean, you, you, you can't be in 20 foot surf and, um, have the chemicals being released in your brain like you do sliding down a 20 foot wave and not be <laughs> some other higher form of <laughs> you're gonna oh, die <laughs> like call, come on <laughs> call, call it what I, and i've almost died out there and, I bet. Uh, and i'll and i can I, I, and i can guarantee you that i was asking god for help in some of those <laughs> it's funny how fast you go uh, to god eh, when you're about to die <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, god, god, god got outside of me real quick when i was taking a 20 footer on the head <laughs> it freaks the crap out of me man i've surfed once or twice with our with uh, philip mckernan went and took surfing lessons and uh, it was cool man i got up on the board first time but uh but it was like in tofino cold we were all yeah. wearing wetsuits but really fun but i need fun. i need to get out there i've had so many friends so many uh canadians tell me i need to get get a trip in there to you surf. probably don't like florida like it's gonna seem like you went to the winter surfing or something <laughs> but anyways so i don't put so a little bit on the same track on that. And um, I, I remember Wayne Dyer saying, he says, God is the ocean and he is a wave. So God is an ocean. We are a wave. And I feel like that describes my faith. And I think it's very similar to what yours is as well. Would you relate to that same? Well, yeah. Number one, being a surfer, of course, I relate to it. Um, but from a practical standpoint, it's that, um, you know, you ask me what God is and I, I don't have the answer to that. I'm still, I'm, I'm just okay with the way my life is right now. My relationship yeah. with myself, I always want to learn and I always want to keep myself open, but I, I'm trying less. Um, Love that. yeah, I don't have that sweat, that sweat on my upper lip. Like I had as a 20 and 30 year old trying to mm. get all the answers and have it all figured out. I, you know what? I, again, I just want simplicity, um, and so I'm always looking for that in, in my in my in my faith and my spirituality and in my relationship with uh, my body and uh, my family and friends, like we talked about. So, you know, I don't have a perfect answer for that. But I believe that I am okay. part of, I, I'm part of God, um, and the people around me are part of God, and I always try to to see that in everything that I come across, even when it appears to be fucked up. Yeah, uh, because we all come across that, right? It, one of the biggest things that I'm working on in my life right now is, is try to remain non-judgmental because, you know, I got this, I got this piss and vinegar in me from where I grew up in New Jersey, New York, where, um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just an excuse, but I'm always quit. You know, the pace that I was raised in was very, very fast. Yeah. And I'm always trying to slow myself down and like, I might see something, there might be someone driving in front of me that's driving like a, they're 120 years old. And I'm thinking to myself, let's go. And, and then I catch myself and that's that quantum leap that I was talking about earlier and be like, you know what, just, just chill. And maybe it's, maybe it's someone's grandmother that's, you know, doing the best she can. And yeah. so for me, remaining non-judgmental is a constant um, thing that I'm aware of on a daily basis and always working on. Do you find yourself to be a performer, like a performance? Yeah. I'm, I'm, naturally? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty uh, a type, you know, yeah. I'm, I think most entrepreneurs are. So, um, so here's my question then. Because yeah. how much is too much? Like how much, how much is too much when it comes to that? Yeah, it's a great question. So I don't have an answer. I'm just curious. Yeah. And I don't, I don't have it. Look, there's no silver bullet. Right. But I, I know, I know what makes sustainable joy for me and I know what my priorities are. My wife will ask me sometimes we put the kids to bed and she knows that, you know, we talk about business. We have some rules around how I share my business with her. So we're not laying in bed talking about it, but we have set time for that. She'll ask me and I'll say, she'll say, you know, do you have work to do tonight? And I say, well, shit, honey, I could be up till 4 a.m. doing work if I wanted to. But no, no, I'm, I'm good. Let's, uh, let's chill. Yeah, let's watch a documentary or let's do nothing. I love doing nothing. So I'm, I'm real clear. You asked the question, how much is too much? Again, getting back to that theme of simplicity, like my wife and I are really trying to simplify right now. We have a pretty good sized portfolio and we're, mm -hmm. uh, we're pruning that and we're um, trying to get out of uh, lives. But in our, in our real estate portfolio, we have millions of dollars of debt because we use leverage. Yeah. So we're pruning that down. And, and you know you have a good sized portfolio when you use the word pruning. So well, just, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, you got a good size portfolio when you're pruning it, <laughs> you must have, you must have the share fair share of real estate. <laughs> well, I mean, we've been at it for 20 years. So yeah, you, yeah. you, you, uh, you, you, uh, 
you do accumulate, but yeah, no question. We're, yeah, we're in a in a cycle in our lives right now where we want to prune down and simplify, yeah. and so I, we know exactly um, down to the dollar what it takes for us to be out of the rat race, and so that's that's the hyper focus right now. Um, and we don't need a lot. That's that's the reality. And the number the number would probably knock some people over. And it's all relative. At the end of the day, I I'm not in competition with anyone else. Um, I don't care what other people are doing as far as you know what their goals are. I'll help where I can and give advice. But my wife and I know the lifestyle that we want. We know um, what it takes to run our our lives and the quality of life that we have and what we want to do in the future and how we want to give back and. So that's a real simple, simple formula. Is that, is that your goal? Like you get to use your real estate as passive income to support your life? Is that the, that's the goal? That's probably been the goal for a while. Yeah. I mean, I have, other, I have other goals outside of that, but as far as mm -hmm. when, it come, when it comes to finances, hands down, it's, it, yeah. it's best, it's the best tool in the world. It's, and, you know, starting out broke and making millions of dollars and then going broke again oh, in the right. global financial crisis. And now we've oh, rebuilt and really just want to simplify. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Um, yeah, the two things I know that your heart is uh, surfing in your family. That's a, that's a big deal, right? So, yeah. so what advice would you give entrepreneurs? If you're looking at them right now and you see them just working away, doing their thing, uh, what would you tell them? You know, I'm, I'm always careful not to prescribe. Um, all I can do is speak from experience and try and help people. So, I, I would tell them to uh, be real cognizant of their overhead. I think that, you know, people, what happened with us is in, in the, we got rich when we were young before we turned 30 and we started hiring all these staff and got a big office and all this fancy bullshit fixed overhead. And at the end of the day, this is what I would tell you is, is not, it's not what you make, it's what you keep, right? You so how, how can you look at what you're doing? I don't care if you're selling surfboards or selling houses or selling whatever you're selling. How can you look at that model and simplify it, right? And really be cognizant of your, your bottom line because so many people will pound on their chest and tell you their gross revenues, but they, they, they're really scared to share with you, uh, you know, what the net is. Well, it's because right? they don't know, Brian. <laughs> a, a lot of them don't, yeah. It's funny in real estate, uh, is coaching real estate agents. It's funny. Uh, it's a really bad industry for ego and gross revenues. They literally get, literally get awards for gross revenue. Yeah, I know. It's completely backwards. And it's like, I could spend a million dollars and make 980 and I'm a God in the industry. Like, like it's so backwards. So I love it. I think that's fantastic advice for entrepreneurs. I'm trying to shift the thinking between being a worker and a business owner. Like a business owner is net, you know, like someone that's working is all gross. And it's, that's such a fantastic. And I'm, it sounds like the 2008 taught you that a little bit. Would that be an assumption I make or is that, is that something that you learned from the overhead thing? Yeah, yeah, I'm mean, experience. I've had mentors tell me that, but sometimes you're 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 a little too thick-headed and uh, yeah. you just learn the hard way. And I will say some advice that I would also piggyback on top of that is um, start to educate yourself on how you can get your money and other people's money working for you versus you working for your money. So the realtor example is is a great one, right? I'm a licensed realtor, um, but I'm an investor, so. The problem with most uh, industries or jobs or however you want to classify that is the day that those people stop showing up for work, their income stops and they're dead in the water, right? So yeah, exactly. for me, I'm hyper-focused on getting my money and other people's money working for me. And I'm a big fan of using leverage and other people's money because I think that's a foundation of how you build a portfolio. But then once you're to go through that acquisition stage, there's these cycles in real estate specifically and, and in business too, there's cycles. Now, now we're trying to simplify and prune. So I think it's okay to, to, uh, to be aggressive, I guess is a good way to put it. You know, some people would look at, you know, the debt that I have and think I'm insane. And then other people would, um, it's all relative at the end of the day. I'm, I'm comfortable with where we're at and my wife and I are crystal clear on what our goals are. Um, but I think advice that I would give is, is don't forget about investing. It's okay to, if you love doing what you're doing, say you're a, um, a manufacturer of surfboards for a living, that's great. But the problem is, is that the day you stop manufacturing surfboards, your income stops. And if you don't have plan B, then you're going to, you're going to run into some problems. Like, like I think about 
longevity a lot. You know, I'm into health and, you know, I'm listening and educating myself. Our children, I don't know how old your kids are. What, what are your children's names? Yeah, lots of them. I got 14, 12, 10, 7, 5. Yeah, so I'm, I'm probably telling you something you already know, but you, your two younger ones are the identical age to my children, so we oh, probably cool. talk a lot about offline about some more yeah, stories. No doubt. Seven year old is? See, that last one just glitched out for just a second there. The life expectancy of our five and seven year olds? Oh, I don't know. Yes, 100? 150. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, sit and think, sit and think with that for a minute. So, where did the map come from? Is that from historical data? So like when they used to die at 30, the ratio between how far we've come now versus how far we're going to come in the future? There's science behind it. I mean, you know, you, you, you can't believe everything you read, but there's science and statistics behind it. The, the resources of abundance with Peter Diamandis um, and Ray Kurzweil's talking about it. I won't go into that. Like That's not Anyways, I'm just curious. Yeah. So yeah, let's, I, let's hear this. I want to hear what you have to say about this. This is interesting. Yeah, well, this is where I want to drive home. You ask me, you know, how could I help entrepreneurs and what advice would I give? They better start thinking about that. I mean, if they're going to have children someday that are um, not even born yet for some of these young startups and young entrepreneurs that are younger than you and I, if their children are going to live to be 150 years old, they better start thinking about how to get some type of passive or leveraged income working for them or they're going to be exhausted working for 150 years right yeah i mean this this thing called life is we're here to enjoy and play and and have fun and if you're if you're having to grind it out for 130 or 140 years out of the 150 then i think there's a much better way right like i'm all for working smart versus hard i have a good work ethic yeah uh, and i can i can work as long as probably the next guy but i'm, I'm much more focused on working smart than hard yeah yeah, it was cool. I was listening to uh, Tony Robbins the other day on one of his podcasts and he was talking about a guy that just took, he says, if you're, if you're, if you got a 20% tax, your government hit you with a 20% tax, you'd pay the bill because that's literally the basic secrets of every bit of financial advice you can give is take the 20% off the top every single month as if it's a tax and pay yourself and then invest it. Right. And that's where yeah. you learn that. But yeah, very, very, it, it can be simple. So Brian, there's a huge miss in the basic education system. Cause that's this conversation here is not happening in schools. Like I don't hear my kids that are in grade five, six, seven, like why aren't they talking about a conversation about this health, like having a health conversation, like not just like, here's a blood vessel. Like, yeah. What, well, what, I, I mean, there's something it, missing. I think you have an opinion about that. Yeah. I got a pretty strong one. <laughs> you got good. Let's you got go. a couple. Days. <laughs> Let's hit the good stuff. No, it's, it's fear-based and, and it's fear-based and control-based versus, you know, love and service, I think is the easiest way to put it. But I mean, it, our, our educational system is based in, in uh, the industrial revolution in the time of that and, and, you know, creating factory workers and educating them and then getting them into the factory to create some goods. And, um, you know, the, the, the guy at the top of the corporation is the only one that, uh, gets help from that. And that shit is so broken. And I think that there's such a conscious movement now, especially in, in our world and our circles that we move in um, to take that and flip it on its head. I mean, I, my wife and I, when it goes back to education are big fans of uh, Montessori, which is, yeah. a, it's just a simple system that gives the power um, and the critical thinking back to the child. It's no more complicated than that. Right. So I go and I sit in, in, in quiet um, observation in my, my boy's class and I just sit in the corner and I don't open my mouth. I just watch and I see the complete opposite of the way you and I were probably going through school as children, whether it's in Canada or in the US. For me, it was show up at 7.45, a fucking bell rings, sit down in this chair here for 45 minutes. When that next bell rings, you go down the hallway, make a right, like army type shit, you know? And, yeah sit down, be quiet, regurg you know, memorize, regurgitate. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you this letter system. It's you're either going to get an A or a D, a B or a C or whatever that is. And there's zero, zero critical thinking. And um, the children are told what to do. And in the Montessori system, which isn't the magic bullet, but it's a great system. Um, it gives all of the, the power back to the child. They decide what they're going to learn that day, right? There's some materials that they can choose from. The, the teacher's not standing at the front of the room. Um, the, it's child-led. The, the, the power is given back to the child to decide what it is they're passionate about. I think it's no more complicated than that. 
everyone knows deep down in their heart and their soul what, what, what excites them, right? So why would we jam a bunch of rhetoric and bullshit down young children's throats and, and just, they don't give a shit about that, right? Half yeah. of them don't care about US history and math and some of the things. And that does serve some people. Um, I'm not here to beat it up. Well, the guy's interested in it, simple. Exactly. My wife's a doctor of physical therapy, so science to her and physiology yeah. to her, what excites her. To me, I, I, you know, that makes me yeah, want and the, and the, Yeah, I, I'm with you, man. Like, I completely... My, my son, he's 14. He's brilliant. He's a, such a... He's very intellectual, smart, but he goes into the school. He's like, okay, hey, dad. I go, so how are you doing? I, by the way, I've never asked my kids how their grade are is, ever. I never ask how their grades are, because I could care less. When my son says to me, he goes, you know what, dad? He goes... Uh, he goes, I got my tests to do. I'm like, oh, cool. You think you're going to pass? Like, what's the deal? He's like, I just need 50% in these subjects because I don't care about them. And I'm going to ace these ones. I'm like, wait, wicked. I love it. He likes the science. He likes the other stuff. He's like, social studies? Ah, if I get 50, I'm happy. Then I get to go to the next grade. Like, it's, it's, it's almost like consciously getting through school and investing in the areas he wants, which I'm trying to teach my kids that you got to work in these systems that are broken. But that doesn't mean you got to. Does, doesn't mean you can't be independent. You know, you don't have to follow the thing. You got to sometimes got to like. I got to. There's certain roads that I think I should be able to speed on, but I got to work on those systems. I got to. You know, like I'm like, why is this road 60? I go 80, no problem, safe. Uh, I'm gonna get in trouble. So I got to work within a system. So it's yeah. a combination of understanding how to navigate being who you really are inside a system that wants to simulate you to be like everyone else. Yeah, either that or, or fuck the system and create your own one, right? I mean, yeah. that's, an op that's an option too. So there's a big movement around. I've spoken like a real entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, you know. I just can build them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a big movement around unschooling and homeschooling, yeah, virtual, virtual schooling. And, and my Xander, wife. Xander Robinson, who yeah, uh, yeah. co-author your book. We'll have to tag him in this. Yeah. Uh, but he, uh, he's doing unschooling as well. They got a whole, the hat, what is it, uh, Instagram unschooling or something? Crap, I don't even know what it is. That's not going to help. But anyway. Uh, honey, uh, honey, I'm homeschooling the kids. I think it's his wife's move. She, yeah, they're, it's her birthday today. So happy birthday, Robin. If you're this hey, time. we're totally, we're going to link her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I love them. I think they're a great family. You know, they, they, they've come to retreats that we've been in the past. But they're, uh, they're, there's options out there. So here's the advice around education. If, look, if, if you're telling yourself and you think that it's broken and you're complaining about it, well, stop complaining about it and go do something about it and fix it, right? Because there's a lot of parents out there that will whinge and complain about how broken the system is, but then they don't do shit about it. And they do something. So they'll, so, yeah. so, they'll, so they'll say something's broken, and then they'll take their most precious gift, which is their children, and go drop them off in that for eight hours a day. So who's, who's, where's the problem there, right? Totally, man. So I, I think that you know, there's a lot of responsibility around you know, the parents around that, too. At least when the children are young. I mean, our five- and seven-year-old, right? Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. It's critical times, right? Yeah. So, so I want to um, like to do a little bit of a lightning round, <laughs> Camry, with a bunch of questions. Get to know yeah. you a little bit on a quick, quick note. Some are totally stupid questions, but they're fun. So here we go. You ready? I got it. Okay. So, what is a growing concern of yours? Growing concern. How do I simplify more? Everything I do, I want to simplify more. Hmm. So I don't know if I don't know if concern's the right word, but that's how I'd answer the Concerned question. Concerned about being busy, concerned about having too much complication. I get it. Like it's a, the opposite side of what you're saying. So the the um you want to simplify. No, that's a great answer. It's inspiring, actually. I've already written down, I'm gonna sit down and say, how can I simplify my business again? I think it's a it's a it's a fun exercise to sit yeah, down and like, hey, where can I simplify? Where can I kill some overhead? Like it's actually one of my favorite things. Like, how can I how can I simplify? What can we cut? Like everyone wants to add entrepreneurs. A type. We want. Hey, let's do a conference, Brian. Let's put it together. We'll call it. We'll call it. What do you call it? Like, uh, sustainable joy. We'll call it sustainable joy, and we'll uh, do a conference together. By the way, that's a pretty good idea. But the problem is, <laughs> the problem is we add more. Yeah. We yeah, add. It's not, it's not just simplifying in business. Just to clarify, it's in my health. It's in my. Mm. Uh, it's in my family. It's in my relationship with my friends. I'm definitely around finance, but I'm I'm, I'm always looking at those five Fs when I talk awesome. about. Awesome. That's really cool. So how do you simplify in faith, family, fitness, finance, and friends? Cool. Um, if you were an animal, what animal would you relate to and why? 
if I was not a, a shark because you're a surfer. <laughs> yeah. Ah, you know what? Sharks are misunderstood, man. I, yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I dove with sharks. I mean, I think that uh, they're they're simple simple creatures, right? They figured out a way to be around for a few million years. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with dolphins. Why? I've spent I've spent time with them in in, in both captivity and in in, in nature, um, and I think that they're they're incredible, beautiful, brilliant fucking animals. I mean, they're. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and if you can, you can YouTube this, but to give you an example of the, the brilliance in them, um, they are so in tune. They, they say that their, their level of intellect is, is way above and beyond. Um, they have a, a level of intuition and intellect beyond human. Mm. Uh, they just communicate in a different way, right? So to give you an example, um, there's a video, you could probably YouTube it. They put a, they put a, a cancer patient in a, in a pool and there's a, um, a dolphin that's already in the pool and the dolphin goes in and hones in on this guy's back. The guy's just on the side of the pool, just hanging on and just, you know, enjoying his environment. And the dolphin goes in and hones in on the guy's back. And um, the guy had been having some health issues and they couldn't figure out what the hell's wrong with the guy. And the dolphin goes in and hones in on this area in the guy's lower back and just starts doing this massage with his nose. On the Crazy. Guy's back. So they pulled, you know, as a, the guy was like, eh, that was, that was an amazing experience. So they pulled the guy out of the water and he continues with the testing and right where the dolphin was massaging, they found this, this uh, tumor that was cancerous and he had it removed. And, you know, he went to all the best doctors in the world that did all this millions of dollars of education and research and technology and all this bullshit. You put the fucking guy in the pool with the dolphin, the dolphin goes, rubs his back and says, here's the problem next. <laughs> and and the dolphin, the dolphin isn't looking for a nod from anyone. If you throw the fucking dolphin a fish, he's going to be happy and move on to the next guy, right? He's not looking to be uh, to get an award for this or what. It's just what he's put here to do. <laughs> Crazy man. So that's and so you're inspired by that to be more like that, and you see yourself love, more like that. I love the simplicity of that. You know, I think that you know, I love I love being in tune or with my own intuition. Um, we all have it. We just don't pay attention to it. So when I look at something like that, I'm like, you know, we're telling ourselves that we're the, the top of the food chain and we're the smartest ones. But then you, you, you watch something like that and you're like, you know, there's a whole lot of crazy shit going on in the, in the animal kingdom. that uh, we. It's almost like there's energy too, right? Like there could be putting off an energy or something. Who knows? Okay, I'll keep going here. Um, has, ever, has anyone ever given you a second chance? Oh, <laughs> probably everyone that uh, knows and loves and cares about me. I mean, I fucked up more uh, between the ages of 13 and 23 than most human beings. Um, my parents are probably where I would start with that. Um, I mean, they have every reason to had, had put me aside for, for years when I was a kid, you know, getting thrown in jail and, you know. So yeah, to answer your question, I think everyone that cares and loves about me has given me lots of second chances. Cool. And my and my wife, I mean, I, I fuck up at home on a daily basis, so she'd be the next one. I'd give her <laughs> She's like, how many? Uh, Fifty chances. <laughs> um, would you rather be hated or forgotten? Would I rather be hated or forgotten? I'd, I'd much rather be hated. Uh, who wants to be forgotten, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that if you don't have some haters out there, then you're probably not doing what you're put on the earth to do. Yeah, no question. <laughs> uh, what's your greatest weakness? Uh, judgment. Hmm. What's your favorite food? What's what's your what's your favorite comfort food? Comfort food. Chocolate. Chocolate in the bedroom. Oh, that might be with something else. <laughs> bedroom, not your favorite activity with chocolate. <laughs> comfort food. But we'll go there next, I guess. No, <laughs> we're not. Did I just uh, get nervous then? <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm a bit excited, to be honest. But uh, we'll just move on. Hey, so if you, were to, if you were to create a scratch and sniff sticker, what oh would the picture God. be and what would be the smell? Oh, my God. Who's going to be listening to this? Um, yeah. everyone in the world listens to this podcast, Brian. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta say, uh, it's funny you're asking that question. I read to my kids at night and my, my, uh, five-year-old 
one of the pages I didn't even realize that had a little marshmallow scratch and sniff on there. And that sh it brought me right back to my childhood. Oh, wow. So you, you repeat the question. What would the picture so be? What would the, what, if you had to criticize your, like, this is the Brian Scrohn scratch and sniff sticker. Oh my God. <laughs> you totally know it and you're not saying it. That's what I think. That's what I think is going on, dude. Holy shit, bro. I, I mean, this could get pretty, uh, pretty it's gonna, racist, right? Oh no. So you're talking like that? Okay, so here's what it would be. It would be my my beautiful wife. Um, and what would the scent be? The scent of my wife, the scent of a woman. The scent of a woman. Beautiful. My, my wife in particular. I want to be careful how I put that out. <laughs> so <laughs> any woman. I mean, no. <laughs> we're, we're clear. We're clear. <laughs> What's the best gift you've ever received? Um, my wife and my children. What's the best and tangible hand-given gift you've ever received? Tangible hand hand yeah, someone gave you Someone gave you a gift. I understand the wife and kids. I get that, man. I'm the same way. Um, I'll, I'm, in, I'm in the market for a 14-0 race board because I just uh, started training for a, a race from the Bahamas to South Florida, so I need a new board. Okay, we're not asking for gifts. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <laughs> just in case, you had to say it, but... What's the, what, a gift that you've been given, like a box of chocolates or, uh, or, or, a what's, the what's the best gift that I've already been given? Yeah. So That's you're looking point. for, you went, you went right out there. That's good. Fuck. I mean, there's a lot of people listening. Someone send me a board. Uh, <laughs> best gift, tangible gift that I've ever been given. That's a good one. Um, that, that oh. board. Tell me about it. What's the story? It's beautiful. It's, it's, it's a handmade and custom made from a, a close for the, for the audio people. It's a, it's <laughs> we just saw. Yeah. So, uh, I only take it down when the, when the surf is huge, like in a hurricane swell and it's, it's handmade. It's a, it's a beautiful piece of art. And it's from a, a friend that means a lot to me. He's sort of an icon in the surf industry and his mm. uh, hand shaped it for me. That's cool. Isn't it funny? Hey, the gifts, it's, it's never, it's never, I've asked a few questions and I've, it's never anything. Uh, it's always, it's always emotional. You know, that it's, it's always special that way. It's always a uh, nostalgic. There's always something tied to it. The best gift. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of, there's a lot of energy and stories around that board. So that's cool, man. That's cool. Thanks for sharing that. That's really cool. So what, what blows you away? What blows me away, the, the creativity of people and the level of, um, I, I, I'm always blown away by the, un, the, the there's no ceiling with the, the possibility that humans can create. Like I watch, I see some of the stuff that like extreme athletes are doing and you know, some of the technology that's being created in the, in the medicine that's being advanced. And that's why our children will be able to be 150 years mm -hmm. old quality of life. So I'm always floored by that and I, I love it. And I'm just, um, I'm always trying to, you know, learn more and, and mm -hmm. just, I, I love the wow factor of, of humans, you know? That's a great answer. That's such a great answer. Uh, what is the ultimate? Ultimate. Whatever. Man, I, I mean, I, again, I, I don't want to sound cliche, but I, I, I love my life, man. I, I, <laughs> there's wow. not a whole, there's not a whole lot that I need or want. Um, you know, the ultimate man. That's a that's a good one. You're making me think. You got a half hour. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Say, yeah. I mean, I don't know how to answer that on, on the spot. I would say do more of what I'm doing. Um, make sure that I'm uh, exposing my bo boys to uh, not only the bubble that we live in in North America here, but. Hmm getting them around the planet and making sure they understand how blessed we are, which I think we're doing already starting to do a, a good job of. Um, but you can talk about that till you're blue in the face, unless you give it to them as an experience, then it's never going to yeah, love gonna that. Love that. So the ultimate is, is, is giving away something like that as an experience. To your experience. Yeah, yeah, the ultimate, I guess, I guess the answer is, is the ultimate is experience, right? Beautiful. Like, cool. You can, it, you can read about it, hear about it, but you got to love it. Great answer. And then the last question, do you wish you had hair? <laughs> you son of a bitch. You. Dude, I wish I have hair. I look at guys and they might probably think I'm gay. I'm like, oh, that guy's got good hair. Like, I just want to run my hands through it. Not because I'm gay. I'm like, 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 I'm half bald all the time. I used to have dreads. Man, you should have seen me, man. I would look oh, like a I, surfer. 
like, I, like I was so so cool and like living like an old guy like man back in the day I had hair like do you feel like you want hair no I'm good with it man I'm pretty cool with the uh yeah, it's low it yeah you know back to the simplicity theme bro <laughs> dude that's like a sales guy like deep down you want hair but really it's like ah, it's all that inner peace man i'm like dude if i put hair on your head i wonder what would change <laughs> i'm serious but nice like italian hair or something like i live in uh, i live in the tropics man you, you sweat a lot here it's nice not to have any hair okay okay well then that's where i need to go that's where i need to go so on this podcast i've always i've always opened myself up because I'm interviewing and, and I'm, I'm hosting and I thought, you know what, what would it be like to have someone every time I have a guest ask me a question and I'm wide open too. And so I figured I put myself in that situation uh, every, every time I do a show because I want to learn and, and I'd like to be challenged as well. We have blind spots and maybe you're just curious about something, but throw, a, throw me a question, Brian, if you want. If you don't have to, you, don't, you really don't have to. No, man, I got lots of questions for you and I have uh, kudos to a little, little plug for plug to you. I've, I've listened to some of your interviews. I just listened to an uh, interview with Phil Randazza you did, who's a mutual friend. So I, I do uh, appreciate that you like to share as well. So let me think. Um, should have been better prepared because I knew you were going to ask me this. But <laughs> I, love, I love being impromptu. So no, me too. What's the, what's the thing that you're least proud of at this point in your life? Hmm. Um, there was a time I forced my family to move and it, and, and it, it's a weird because there's the gift in it where we, my wife and I almost split up. It was traumatic. Like I, I, I just was so in vision of having something a few years ago and I wanted to move and my wife's like, I don't want to move. And I fought her and I got what I wanted. And then, and about three or four months later, she wanted to divorce me. And I go through that process and then I started, so, so there's a gift in it. But the thing is that like, this is, this is actually quite a few years ago now, but I'm not proud of that. I'm not proud of that. If I could like, like, I don't regret it. Like the gift I have right now, my wife and I are jiving, man. Like we are really jiving best we've ever been so good. And that was the catalyst because it kicked my ass bad. And if I could redo it, which I can't, and I don't want to, I would probably be just being a lot more gentle and I probably would have just let her have a conversation around it. So you're uh, itching to say something. Let's hear it. I, I would challenge you there. If you Good. know, yeah. if you know where you're at now in the, in the, in the love and the depth and the um, space that you're in with, with your wife right now, which I, I do listen to some of your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, why, why, why would you change it? No, I didn't like, say change it. I, I, I really identify the, the perfectness of it, Brian. It, it was, it was, it was like the hand of God in some level. Okay. Like it's the, the, the pivotal thing that took our marriage down to no bullshit beyond no bullshit. And it was exactly what I needed to be where I'm at today. So just get that straight. But, but I would, but if like, I'm, there's not many things like I've done, I've done a lot of bad shit when I was younger. That's <laughs> not cool. And it, but I, I'm like, it's the one thing I thought, man, if I, I wish I would have handled that a little bit better. Like the way exactly. I was hard and I was a controller and, 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 and like I said, though, my theme is life is perfect. And so like, I don't, I don't hold it against myself, but I'm not proud of how it went down. Yeah. I mean, no, no man ever wants to hurt his, his wife, right? His queen. You know, I, I, I can relate to that. But it's good that you're crystal clear. Cause I think for your listeners, if they're, you know, the, the, Look, out of, out of the darkness comes light, not to sound cliche, but I mean, sometimes you got to bounce off the bottom, you know? Perfect, man. 100%. I think yeah. 100%. Our, our mutual friend, Philip, what's he say? When the pain is enough, you change. Yeah. So yeah. I used to tell myself stories, and I used to really believe them. And I'm a pretty good sales guy, pretty good communicator. And I would convince myself of things, and my wife, it would, she just wouldn't be heard. You know what I mean? And it just wouldn't, I would just, it's just like you get thick-headed. And it just like, I needed, I need sometimes a little bit of a sledgehammer is what I needed. It's not for everybody, but at that moment, that's what, that's what, that's what took me to my destiny in a way. I could have been broke. We could have had bad things happen, but we've, we, we've learned to embrace pain, embrace the process because that's where 100% is where the uh, outcome is, uh, is birth. So. I love it. I got one more for you. You got time? Got time. Simplify. How would you simplify your life right now? 
I want to simplify my life right now. Dude, you're getting me at like the most. I'm, I'm like at 100 miles an hour, but how would I simplify? Yeah, I've got so much going on and like what area I like, how would I simplify? Like, like to be honest, I'm like, I'm really into my life right now. Like I'm loving it. Um, I think I'm on the process of simplifying. Like I'm, I'm no longer doing many uh, sales. That's my number one thing to not do real estate sales. We're creating, and I'm in the middle of creating a business that's going to fund that. So yeah, I don't know. I, I <laughs> Probably a hundred ways, and I don't know, you know. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Are you getting out of that business, or you're hiring people to do it for you? I've got a full team running it. I've just turned the corner where, where it's sustainable. I'm, I'm, I, I'm. Every single lead that comes in goes to four other real estate agents. I fully run. I'm, I'm the CEO, legit. So what I'm, what I'm actually building right now is like I'm going across Canada doing three speaking engagements. We're doing a full thing called how to, the art of building a real estate business. It's agent. I'm rebranding my whole world from within. I'm changing business from within the podcast to from within. Because yeah, I know. Deep, I've heard that in one of your yeah, interviews. And because deep down business is my talent and I like to hide behind my talent and I don't want to hide behind my talent. I, it'll always be there, but I don't, I want to put something else first. And that's from within. If anyone's worked with me, anyone getting anywhere near me, it's always inside out. It's always challenging who we are being ourselves. And by the way, that's a, the way to be successful in business. You can double your income by working on yourself. Like you said before, the first pillar is that relationship with yourself. I'm, I'm doing agent from within. Uh, and that's what I'm building out. It's going to be agent from within Academy. People can, I'm, I, I'm kind of preparing for a crash a recession again, where I want to have it. So it's very affordable coaching. So I'm going to be doing live coaching three times a month and it's 200 bucks a month. And then they get recorded calls. They get all the questions and all my stuff in the Academy. It's very simple. So, so it's a virtual, it's a virtual model. You go on yeah. the road and you come but home. It's, and but it's also right here. Like me and you, like say you're on the call, you put a question, boom, I put you on the screen and I coach you. Yeah. Which is the most like that is I get off these calls and I'm in like euphoric because I get to look inside your soul and I get to pull you out. And then just happened to be that I got amazing strategies and crazy cool at marketing. Well, it's just a, it's a little detail, but one of the one of the coolest things about it is is that you get off the you get off the interview on the computer, and then you walk out and you can kiss your children and your wife instead of yeah. sleep sleep in a hotel a thousand miles away. Hundred percent. And so, just so you know, uh, what we what we're doing is in January. So I'm going to Toronto first for this event. Then we're going to January January in Vancouver and then Edmonton. And what's really cool is I'm bringing my entire family. This has been a dream of mine to bring my family. So I'm going to go speaking. I'm going to be this, this public figure. I'm going to go give to people. But the dream is that my family's with me, but it's not on my mission. What we're going to do is they want to be there now. This is the difference. Like before it's like, I want to come. Not really dad. Now it's like, my wife's like, Ben, can I come with you to Toronto? I said, well, why don't we do this? Let's go. I'll, we'll do the event. The whole kids can see it. And then we're going to spend an extra week down there. We'll go skiing and hang out. So, and it's cool because it's write-offs too. And so it. it's all on the company dollar. And I think what a cool life. That's why it's exciting. And so like, we're just there now. Like it's to be able to, to be able to fly around the world, do some, do some events. And my family comes, we just do like holidays. Yeah. So that's been pretty cool. So I'm simplifying the business. So it's not like I'm not doing, I got like three one-on-one -on -one coaching clients now. I'm cutting that all out. And then down the way, the next move is this. So here's, you want to hear more of this or is this nothing? I love it, man. You're okay. answering, you're answering the question. Well, yeah. <laughs> if, if this the is question. the Brian, this is now the Ben show and I don't mean to do that. And that's why I'm, <laughs> but the plan is this, is that the three coaching meetings every month that real estate agents can jump onto is one will be how to find clients. The second thing is how to build business systems to buy back your time. So you can reconnect with your relationships. And then the last thing is personal growth. So the next move for me is I'm going to open up a, a from within Academy or something. And I don't care what the name is, but it's going to be the once a month coaching that anybody can get into. And that's the merge out of real estate. Yeah. So people can come onto a call and the topic is how is fear affecting your life? Or let's do a call on, on like how let's talk about the mental pressure we face and the effects on business and life. So anyone can jump on that call. So there'll be kind of this cool merge of like real estate and then merge it into the from within brand. And then later it's going to be three or four, like maybe two to three adventures where you bring high net worth people out. And that's the mastermind after that. I love so, that. So, and I'd love to do the whole thing where it's like me and you 
with our kids at the mastermind event doing something in a third world like stuff like that like where it's true adventure and true connection but now, now you got me just blabbing on about my my world man no we got a bit of a glitch here hello 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 i think we're glitched out Hello, hello, hello. We're back. Oh, there you are. Hold on. Let me cancel that. There you are. Good. Okay. Beautiful. Good. I don't hopefully, even. Hopefully, you got a good editor. Yeah, I don't even care to be honest. It, it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do have a good guy. <laughs> I probably edit that chunk out. So. I think we get too fancy. We get so fancy on what we produce. I just, if it's good content, people listen, you know? Yeah. People cool. like to buy a lot of really expensive mics and, and set up all of that stuff and they forget the content's got to be good. So yeah, you, look how fancy my office is. You're in my house here. Yeah, you got it, man. You got it. You should see what's around me. I, mine's really, really bad. So I'm not going to show it to you. But anyways, <laughs> Brian, Brian, it's been, an, uh, it's been my pleasure to have you on the show. You've, you've asked me some great questions. I think we've had some really good conversations. I still think you want hair. Uh, I just, I don't believe you're happy with your bald. I think you must, you must, you must be hiding something under that beanie, bro. Yeah, dude, look, I got like nothing. It's all bald. I got oh, you're like, one of, no wonder why you're keep drilling me on this shit. You're one of those guys that's trying to hold on there. Just shave it. Bro. Dude, that's like two days. I cut that sucker off all the time. Like if she gets shaved right off, it's just a pain in the ass to shave that all the time. The middle part's great. doesn't even grow anymore. I'm just hoping <laughs> it's proceeding now, right? Put some, put some coconut oil on there, bro. You'll be all right coconut oil is that a secret or what you're just trying to set me up i'll be like no nah, brian told me like you're an idiot why do you fall for that shit you have coconut oil in your head so <laughs> anyways, I'm gonna, i'll cut the recording i'll cut the recording now and uh yeah it's been awesome man cheers